I think we're just in the top of this. We haven't seen a fallout yet. It's going to take a year, two years, for the real fallout to come. You're talking about restaurants. 100,000 restaurants are going to close. 100,000 businesses are going to close. And that's, that's, that's going to be a trickle effect. And it's going to be boom, 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 boom. All of a sudden, what happened to half the restaurants? I haven't been in Manhattan in two months. I had to go there one time. And you could feel the difference. You know, us being tour guides, you could just feel that difference. Like, wow, wow, this, this city's different. This is Jim, a man who can trace his lineage seven generations through New York City's history. Like a lighthouse keeper, Jim feels a great responsibility in endearing New York to the millions of people who visit each year, tending to the preservation of its vast legacies, keeping the lights of its heritage bright for all to see. It is both his birthright and his muse. It is both the nest and the sky. Myself, cut off entirely from my roots, I have no idea what my biological father even looks like. Yet Jim can tell you stories about his great, 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 great grandfather, and then show you pictures. And yet Jim and I have found our professional identities one and the same. We love this city. We feel connected to it in ways that transcend simple fascination, and our lives are sustained through sharing it with you. Over the course of a few days, I teamed up with Jim to discuss the particulars of the hardships facing New York in the year 2020, and the possibilities that lay ahead. The lights here appear dimmer. The spirit of the streets emit more anxiety than they do aspiration. But despite these circumstances, Jim's outlook is positive. I attempt to glean his sentiments and discussion of everything from the fate of the restaurant industry, where Jim has more than 15 years professional experience, to immigration history, to the mafia, to movies and music. Somewhere in our conversation there is a reassurance that not all who scrounge in the dark are blind, that not all who suffer are in pain, and that not all who dream are asleep. Yeah, you know, it just you know, it just reminds me of um, the Twilight Zone. Remember what's the name? Bertrand Meredith. He was there, and he was like, and he was like, I wish I had the whole place to myself. Remember that? Yeah. And all of a sudden, then everybody was gone, nothing left. And he had all the books to himself. I remember he had all the books, but then he broke his glasses or something like that, some crazy shit like that. Like you know, we're at tour guides, right? Going, wow. God damn, it's so goddamn busy down here. Oh man, I hate doing that tour on the weekends. It sucks, all the people down here. Can't, can't even, it's comfortable. You can't you wait for people across the street. They can't, they can't get in. People all over the place, and here we are. Wow. Be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Look at that. Look at my photo, man. Is that the Mulberry Bend? I think it is. That's where, um, what do you call it? That's Columbus Park today, right? Where, where, where yes, that's right, Columbus. that's right. That's where the expression you are, Mark Mann, comes from. You know that? No. Yeah. Years ago, if you... I got Mark one time uh, in, in New York. Years ago, if, if you're walking around, they might come up to you and just pat you in the back. How you doing? You give a walk around. They would mark you. So people down the street, you were the mark. They knew you had money on you. They would take you out. And that was the expression. You are Mark Mann. That happened to me one time in um, the restaurant business. I was, I was going to the bank. Went to the bank, got some money, put it in my pocket, walking back to the restaurant, and um, a guy comes up to me and goes, oh, excuse me, he goes, you got something all over your back. What are you talking about? Like some kind of mustard. I go, mustard, what are you talking about? He goes, well, let me help you out with your jacket. I go, no, that's okay, dude. The kid yells at me, dude, you just got marked. Back then they were squirting mustard on you. They would say, oh, let me help you with your jacket. He's trying to get your jacket. They're pulling the money out. Now this is all going on at the same time. I don't know where, true story. Ten cop cars pull up, er, 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 freeze, hands up, everybody. What the hell is going on here? Everybody gets the warm, <laughs> what the hell is going on here? Cop comes up to me, goes, we've been following this guy for the last three hours. They didn't get the money, by the way, he did not get the money. He didn't get the money, he goes, because you had five guys on you. Did you know that? We've been following this guy for the last four hours. <laughs> what was that? That was back in early 90s. And then, I, and then and then, of course, it took me, you know, so I get back to the restaurant, and Anton, where the hell have you been for the last hour? I go, dude, you don't want to know. And he goes, I told you. He goes, he bring a lot of cash to, to the bank. He goes, I told you every time you walk down the damn street, take a different block. Now, as you notice, look on the sign over there. 
is the oldest gift shop in Little Italy here since 1910. And I remember as a kid coming to Little Italy, my father would take us down there, he was a musician, accordion player. So he'd come down and have to get a sheet music. Now this store was on the corner here, up until about 10 years ago, and moved over here. And every time I want my Italian music, you're not going to find any stores, you got to come here. When I want the old timers, I want like Geely, I want um, Juma Roselli, all the classic Italian music, you got to come here. Nobody, nobody has this stuff, even Tower Records in the heyday, nobody had this music, you got to come to this guy here. You walk inside this place, it's like a treasure trove over here. I don't like the sign over here, see what it says? I, that's what I love about Little Italy, some of these places. Look at the hours, store hours, seven days a week, three to nine, roughly. <laughs> you gotta, there's a cigar store right down a block here. You never know when this guy's gonna open up. He might be open up for two hours, and then the next day he's closed like for a week, and then he opens up for an hour. And by the way, that's where John Gotti got his last cigars before he. There's been a lot of movies. His bar. This is from Goodfellas. Remember the scene from Goodfellas when Joe Pesci, when Joe Pesci killed the guy in the bar? Oh. The shine box scene? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, 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 and, they, and they blew the restaurant up in a movie, remember they burnt it down? Okay. Years ago, you'd come to this place, I loved it. Just, you, you felt the, the, the uh, how can you say it, the spirit of Little Italy, if you will. Just the crowds out hanging here. Okay, the bathroom's in the back. There's a whole section private back here. So you had, if you had to go to the bathroom, there'd be a guy sitting right there, he goes, where are you going? I'm going to use the bathroom, okay, good. But you couldn't hang out there. Go to the bathroom, get the hell out of there, go back to the bar. And then all the gumbas was just some fun and shit. And I'd come in, I'd, what the first thing I would do when you go to a place like this, I had a jukebox. I'd go over and I'd put in Jibby Roselli. And the crowd would just look at you like, ooh, Roselli, huh? You like Roselli? I love Roselli. Jibby Roselli was a, he was a singer during Frank Sinatra time. And um, as a better than Frank Sinatra, and Sinatra hated him, by the way. And Sinatra's mother wanted him to sing at one of his a function for her. He said no. That was it for him. Never heard of him again. Never saw his music again. He never sang again. Everything was taken out of the jukeboxes. He was done. That's when people knew Sinatra had power. Okay, so when you come to Little Italy years ago, you couldn't find his music. You could find his music and not like, like a record store there, but you'd have to ask for it. You got Jimmy Roselli music, they'd look at you sometimes like, well, you know, you, you like Roselli? I'm like, yeah, I like Roselli. Femina. Fantastic. Maybe we'll put that on later. What a voice. Um, he died like 10 years ago. But he started singing again up in the Catskills. But in the late 80s, they let him start singing again. But what? Eh? You, when you listen, when you watch a lot of those mom movies, that's Jimmy Roselli singing in the background, by the way. The, the Italians loved. He was like a god, Jimmy Roselli. All right, well, my, 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 my biggest fear is every time we get a new flu, we're going to go through this shit. Okay? You know, this is bad what we're going through. But I mean, Every time something else comes out, we're going to go through this again. Like, oh, something's coming out, lock it down. And if we get locked down again, it looks like we're going there. Let me tell you something. That ain't going to be good. I think that you're going to see a lot more shit from people uh, if we go to lockdown. How many times How many times can you do this? I mean, granted, winter time's coming in, right? So winter time, you're going to, so, you know, summertime, you got to get out. Winter time, you're going to be locked in your house. You're going to go nuts. I mean, how many times can you go through this? They did the, they did the survey three times at the schools. Open it up, close it up, open it up, close it up, close it up. That's so people are going bonkers. That's the other thing. We don't know what's going on. It's closed. It's open. You can do two seating, five seating. The the okay, all these restaurants have outdoor seating. Now there's new rules for the winter time. What they have to do, they have to put sand inside all these barriers. Okay, now if it's going to be a bad snowstorm, you know what they have to do? They have to take all the stuff down. That's crazy. So these things are going to we might get two feet of snow tonight, and you know how the weather is. Sometimes you only get an inch. Also, they have ripped all the stuff down. So they could plow, then put it back up, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But how, how, how are you going to move that thing? How are you going to move it? <laughs> In fact, my grandmother told me when she was a kid, when they moved up here, that there was still woods over there. There was still wooded areas over there. And they had the trolley cars back then. Then when they put the, F, the, the subway system in, they literally had her rip up to the front of the home, all these steps were off. The whole block is ripped up. Back then they did what they got cut and covered. They didn't bore. They did cut and co cover over here. So they literally, so up to these homes are steel. All through here, all this whole thing over here. And I remember uh, about back 90s when they were re 
fi fixing everything, making the sidewalks nice, putting the street lamps in. They ripped up the street, and guess what was still there? The trolley car tracks. In the exact same spot with the cobblestones. Uh, and it was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. I go, why didn't I keep that? LB, that was the family name, La Barbara. So that's the initial, LB, La Barbara. Uh, about, about 15 years ago, we were doing some work on a house here, and some lady's walking by. You know, she's looking at me, I'm looking at her. She's with her daughter and her husband. She goes, oh, don't mind me. She goes, I just want to show my daughter where I used to go when I was a kid. I'm like, here? I was glad to know who she was. She goes, oh, no, no. I just go back. I go, maybe, she goes, no, no, this house. She goes, the initial, the family initial, La Barbara. La Barbara. Goes, How do you know the La Barbara? She goes, oh, my, my aunt lived here for, for many years. And um, I think she lived here with her grandson near the end. I said, you thinking of Mimi? That's what we call my grandma, Mimi. She goes, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's my grandma. I go, what? I'm the grandson. She goes, what are you talking about? I go, Mimi was my grandmother. Mimi was her aunt. Her aunt. So wait a minute. So wait a minute. We, we're family. She goes, yeah. She had no clue family members were still living here. That chandelier has been here since 1917. When it's, when it's cleaned up, it's crystal. So when, you, when, he's, when it's cleaned up, the sparkle that comes out of there absolutely is stunning. Well, this statue here has been in this house for 100 years now. My great grandfather bought that in 1920. So, here's a picture here of my great grandfather when he was turning 80 years old, by the way. In 1968, so that picture is like from the 1950s. That is my cousin's grandkids. Okay? My uncle is their great great grandfather. It's hard to follow this one, right? Mind boggling. So I tried to explain to them that they're sitting in their great, 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 great grandfather's house. That's amazing. With that, and, 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 and by the way, you notice I put them in the statue. <laughs> everybody has, everybody comes into this house has to go by the statue. I used to always tease. I used to, I used to say to people sometimes, I go, "Have you ever met anybody before the Brooklyn Bridge was completed?" Like, what are you talking about? That's impossible. I know it's not impossible. He's born in 1881. Brooklyn Bridge was not completed until 1883. I have an original, I can't find the damn thing. Anyway, this is the first Christmas celebrating in the house, 1917. And if you take a look, it's a little hard to see, but guess what? That's the chandelier. Same chandelier. Look at the toys that kids back then, might not. My great uncle, which is this guy here, we'll tell you about him. He never really got to know his mother, because I was talking to you earlier. She died a couple months later, influenza. My grandmother was 13 at the time. Right now, losing your mother 13 at the time, and she became basically had to, had she took had to take care of her kid, had took care of the um, took care of her siblings. Francesco Tricali La Barbaretta from Sicily. Catherine Hendry from Ireland. They grew up in the Five Points. This is their engagement picture in 1905. Imagine that, Irish and Sicilian. That was like taboo back then. And that's my, that's my great-grandmother, great-great-grandmother. And that's my great-grandmother's mother <laughs> over here. They're sitting on a roof in the Lower East Side. Isn't that a great picture? Because look at the cities that have been built up yet. Imagine that's the Lower East Side. They're sitting on top of a roof deck. They're from County Cork, by the way. 66 James Street, which doesn't exist no more. That whole block is gone. That's what the projects are basically nowadays, or what they call it between the bridges, right? So that's my great grandfather as a kid. He must be about four years old. And that's his father. Okay, so this picture you're looking at, they went to the fruit business. There, that picture goes, that's about 1886. So he became one of the largest food importers in the United States, working directly with United Fruit Company. That's his warehouses. And you look back then, look at all the types of bananas back then. Back then, a lot of Cuban bananas that come from all parts of the, all parts of the world. That's a picture of my great grandmother as a kid. She must have been like 18, maybe at the time. Easter, right? And that, I believe that was um, Elizabeth Street. 
the Lower East Side. Her mother had a her mother had a candy store, so my great grandfather would go in there all the time. And he said when he walked through the neighborhood, he could not walk on the sidewalk. He had to walk the streets. If he walked on the sidewalk, he's going to get his ass kicked by the Irish. You know, the, the, the Italians didn't like the Italians. That's the bottom line. Okay, depending on what part of Italy you were coming from. Italy was not even called Italy. It's like, what, 1890? Back then, it was different providences at that time. So when my grandfather, that era, came to America, the Sicilians, they were pure businessmen. The Scots, when they came to New York, they were pure businessmen. The first wave of Irish came in, they were first they were businessmen. Then he entered the 1920s, and Italy is sending everybody in, all from all types of it, coming in from Italy. And the other Italians go, you know, who are these guys coming in here? When my father's family first came into America, they moved to Mulberry Street. My grandfather didn't like it. It was slum back then. It wasn't like, you know, we think of the old movies. Oh, you know, they were so slummy. They got out and they moved in. They also, in that big wave of Italians, they went to the Bronx. Now you get it? One day, when they went to the Bronx back then, it was like still far, far, far. Well, because now there's a subway to get you. Get, get, and there was still farm line up there. I always say, you know, think of the Lower East Side, right? You're coming from Ireland, beautiful land, right? Landscape, gorgeous. Now you come to America, and now you're in the Lower East Side, these goddamn tenements. You gotta remember, people in their 40s and 50s, what a hard time you, you, they must have had. Now, if you're a kid, I guess you didn't know the difference. You were just born, that you, that you were raised with. But imagine leaving your beautiful land, Italy, and then you're coming to the Low East Side, and you're sitting there going, Low East Side, shit, my, 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 my uncle was, was a king of Italy at one time. People were like, they shut the fuck up, because they, they, you, you're nothing now. I think we'll rebound. New York always does rebound. We've, you know, we've, we've gone through this, and we're going through something different, because back in the 80s, when New York was falling apart, the Bronx was burning down, Half these homes were boarded up in these neighborhoods. Back in the 70s, what well, was it? Gerald Ford said to the city, drop dead because they needed money. And you really saw the decline in New York. Nobody thought it was going to come back. So where we are today, we're a lot better off than we were back then. Are we going to go back to that where people are getting evicted, they're losing their homes, they're going to start boarding homes again? I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think anybody's going to let that happen. We've been there once. You know, you got a lot of people that they're leaving New York. They're leaving New York. These are not New Yorkers leaving New York. You got people that come to New York for five years. They're running upstate. Beautiful up there. Hudson Valley squadrons up there. Great article in the paper the other day. You know what people are doing now? They're coming back. They're bored. <laughs> I tell you what, when everybody from all over the world, too, but especially from the States, when they came to New York to pay homage for 9 11, that made you feel good. It made you feel it's like, wow, people do care. They do care. They actually, they, 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 they just plowed into this town. They pay their respects. And yeah, yeah, it's just thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was out one night, I was at a bar somewhere, and I, it was a, there was a, a father and son, and they were firemen. They're not from New York, by the way. And I heard their conversation, and they were, they were here volunteering. I was like, wow, guys, you know, and um, we had a great time. I took them out for them. I was like, come on, night's on me, let's go. <laughs> I said, we wouldn't bar, we wouldn't bar hopping. You're ready, you're ready to go to New York. So I, I wouldn't bar hop with these guys. They so brought them everywhere. They go, thanks, Jimmy. I go, no, thank you. I mean, come on. Thank you guys for coming in. And, uh, and it, that's the difference. Are we going to see that after all the bullshit is done? Is everybody going to say, all right, oof, it's all done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, let's, let's go a different way. Let's get back to normal. Or are we still going to be fighting? You gotta have the faith. And I don't mean faith as in religion. You gotta have, um, depending on what you do in life. If you love what you do in your life, are you gonna pick up? Are you gonna go somewhere to try it over again? You're not gonna. In New York, you, know, you just, you just, you're not gonna. Unless a lot of people are gonna be working from home. That's gonna be another thing we were, you know, talking about earlier. That'll be a new thing. Talking. People can get sick of that. They get tired of that already. Now I'm walking from home. You need to be around people. You need to socialize. You need to get out there. Um, you know, the big thing is, which I don't do, I don't know why, I don't do it, you gotta, you know, get the, the Zoom stuff, just being, you know, that's a good time to, you know what the perfect time to do is right now, seriously? Contact people you haven't talked in the last 10, 20 years. Time to catch up. People, when you make phone calls to people right now, you're gonna feel better, they're gonna feel better that, you, that you're thinking of them, because you're right, because everybody's running around there, no one thinking of me, no one cares about me, people care, it's just they're in their own world, literally their own world right now, they're, their own little space in their head. They got to you know worry about the themselves. world space in their head. And I think that there is a chance that in like a year, mm -hmm. uh, you're getting a phone call right now. That's awesome. 
I remember when someone said uh, the, when, they, when they heard the subway running again and they knew we were coming back oh, hear the subway hear that, that, so, hear the, you want, I want to hear the city noises again I want to hear those city noises mm-hmm. I want someone to I'm going to be walking down the street and someone tell me to go fuck myself because I walk right in front hey you fucking idiot <laughs> by the way I think that when we get the stimulus money all the money we spend all that money we spend should be spent in America spent in your local community go to your local grocery keep your local people going guys just give back you know I was you know tipping better than I ever tipped before because you know those folks look, look they, they need those tips um, and that's all just I'm not saying throw the money out like that but just just keep keep it keep it in your local place and keep everybody going we'll, we'll get through this we'll get through this I think there'll be lessons learned off this and hopefully uh, not hate. This is my father. My father was a uh, he's, he's an accordion player. Let me short pictures of him up on on, um, on the walls over there. Now I don't know, but I'm assuming, you know, he wrote the music and all that kind of stuff. Now my mother's name is Eula Eulalia. And guess what that says? Eulalia. I think my mother knows about this song. What do I?